Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I'm working on this Troy built tiller. This one was dropped off by a subscriber named Paul who drove a whole trailer full of equipment up to me. So I'm gonna make a few videos on some of those items starting with this tiller. Anyway, the story behind this tiller was that it belonged to his neighbor and his neighbor offered it to Paul saying that it needed most likely a new carburetor or a carburetor cleaning. So Paul took the tiller and he actually ordered the new carburetor and was getting ready to install it when he realized that although the engine's not stuck, there is absolutely no compression. So he did pull the plug. He already took a look in there and he said the piston is not moving. So I will verify that. And as far as the oil goes, well, let's just say I don't see any. So yeah, I would say this ran out of oil. The connecting rod seized on the crankshaft and blew the rod. You know, can this engine be rebuilt? I don't know. And we're not going to know until we get it off, get it opened up, and just see how bad the damage is. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. That plug does not feel too good coming out of there. I think I see the piston going up and down. I mean, just just barely on that side, but when I pull the engine over, right there. That that's the piston. But there is no compression in the cylinder, and I do feel air actually pushing out of the exhaust. So I would say we just have a stuck valve. So let me see if I can get in there a little bit better and take a look at that exhaust valve. Exhaust valve is opening. So yeah, I guess I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, the piston seems to be going up and down. Exhaust valve is not stuck. So let's get a compression tester on there and just make sure I'm not crazy. But I don't, I don't think we have compression. Not zero, maybe 10. So yeah, we're definitely not gonna run with 10 PSI. So I'm gonna hook up the leak down tester, just add a little bit of pressure and see where it's leaking out. Just rotated the engine until it was top dead center of the compression stroke. So both valves should be closed. So let's add a little bit of pressure and see where it's going. Definitely leaking from the exhaust, nothing from the oil fill. And it's a little hard to tell actually on the intake because I got the air filter on, but that exhaust for sure is an issue. Until that is not leaking, we really won't know how the rest of it is sealing up. So I guess the question is, is it just a little rust keeping that valve open or is it out of adjustment? And something like this doesn't get used a lot. So I would lean towards rust as the possible issue. So I'm gonna spray some PB blaster in there, just kind of soak things a bit and see if that fixes anything. Actually, I'm going to use WD-40. I'm going to double check the compression. Now that there's some WD-40 in there, see if it's come up any. I 
Yeah, maybe a little. Close to 20 PSI. Still not enough to start it, though. We need closer to 50 or 60 PSI. And my thought is, once it starts running, if there is any rust on the valve or the seat, that just having the engine running should clean that up a bit. So I'm going to give it a little more time with the WD-40. I think I might take the recoil off, rotate the engine with the drill, and see if that can't get that valve to seat any better. Ideally, I'd get this up on the lift, but it doesn't freewheel. The only way to freewheel it is to remove the pin, which has already been removed. And this wheel is supposed to spin on the axle, but it is rusted in place. And it's like that on both sides. I think I'm going to leave it down here. And before getting this recoil off and just turning the engine over, hoping the valve kind of seats better, I think I'm going to get the intake manifold off. We'll get all of this stuff off get the valve cover off and get a look inside, see if there is any clearance on that exhaust valve. I can tell just by rotating the engine, there's no clearance on the exhaust valve and the intake is not far behind. I'd say the intake is almost zero as well. So yeah, the only way to fix that on this type of engine is to pull the head, get the valves out and take a little bit off the valve stem to get the proper clearance. So yeah, let's start breaking this thing down. We'll get the valves out. I'll look up the specs to see what that gap should be and we'll set it and put it back together. Curious to see if the engine really is empty. Yeah, not empty. There is something. So I'm going to let that drain out. I do want to get fresh oil in the engine. It's a bad idea to let an engine sit around without oil in it or low oil in this case. And it's basically out of oil and the oil that's in it is very thick and burnt looking. So yeah, this is long overdue for some oil.
Looks like the critter did a number on this wire going over to the ignition coil. So that will need to be replaced. But for now, let's finish getting this head off. Yeah, definitely not closed. That valve should not be spinning. If I rotate the engine, the intake's now closed and that does not spin at all. So yeah, should be an easy fix. Cylinder doesn't look too bad, but it's not perfect either. There are two areas of concern, one of them being right here. You know, I can just feel that. And there's a similar spot over here in between the valves. So yeah, this one might be an oil burner, which would explain why the engine was low on oil. But the big issue keeping this from running is the exhaust valve. So let's get both the valves out. We'll set the clearance, get this thing put back together and see if the engine will run. The valves don't look too bad. So I'm gonna start just by cleaning the valves up and I'm gonna take a little off the exhaust valve. I'm not gonna set the final clearance yet, but I do wanna get some clearance so I can lap both of these in. And then I'll set the final clearance at four thousandths on the intake and eight thousandths on the exhaust.
The intake valves all lapped in and ready to go. I actually didn't need to take anything off the length of this valve. As it is, it's coming in at about six thousandths, which is over by a bit. It should be four thousandths. And the exhaust valve, I was aiming for eight, and I overshot that one. It's coming in closer to 10. So yeah, not ideal, but it should run just fine. So I've placed an order for a new head gasket. We're waiting for that. We'll get the mating surfaces cleaned up, get this wire repaired, and put a new fuel line in. This one is pretty crispy. Actually, before I move on, I want to point out a couple things related to these valves. I guess first off, I said having excessive clearance shouldn't cause an issue, but I can think of at least one thing that might be a problem, and that's the decompression system. When the engine's running slow, the exhaust valve gets bumped on the compression stroke to let a little compression out. And if the clearance is too big, when the tappet goes to push or bump that exhaust valve, it's not going to move the valve. So I was just double checking that. And right now we're on the compression stroke. So the intake should be closed and the exhaust is closed as well. But if I rotate it a little more, the exhaust valve should get bumped just a bit. And it did. You can see it's open just a little. And if I go a little further, that valve is now shut. So Although the clearance is excessive, it's not so much that it's basically disabling the decompression system, but it is not going to open that quite as much as it should. So the compression might be a little on the high side when trying to start it, so we'll have to pay attention to that when putting this engine back together. The other thing that I noticed, which might explain why the clearance disappeared, other than the fact that this is a 33 year old engine and most likely the valves have never been adjusted. So it is normal that the valve wears into the seat a bit and that clearance closes up. But in this case, I noticed the valve is really loose in here. So if I just bring it up a little and wiggle it around, that that's moving quite a bit. So I don't know what the spec is on that. I would say that is an issue. If I do the same kind of wiggle test on the intake, you can see it's much tighter. So yeah, it's not ideal having the valve that loose. There is a valve guide in there. I checked online on the parts diagram and it doesn't even show it as a serviceable part. So I think I'm going to have to run it like this, but it's not the end of the world. The Intake, you don't want to have loose because if that is loose, the intake's exposed to engine vacuum and that'll pull oil through. It'll cause your engine to smoke. It also pulls through unmetered air. So instead of going through the carburetor, it comes up through the valve guide and the engine runs lean and runs hot. And the oil also causes a lot of carbon buildup, which will cause issues with the valve seating properly. So although this isn't great, you know, I think it's the best case scenario. It'd be a lot worse if the intake was like that. Now, the last thing you can do, if you're checking the valve guide, an easy check you can do is just put your finger over the hole where the valve stem came out and pull the valve out real quick and listen for a pop. And there's absolutely nothing. So that tells me the valve guide couldn't build a vacuum when I pulled the valve out. That's because the clearance is excessive in the guide and a vacuum could not build up. Now, if I do the same on the intake, we should hear a pop. If I can get the valve out. Hopefully you heard that. Let's try it again. So the intake valve guide, it is a snug fit. And I don't think I'm going to have an issue with that.
cut up a new piece of fuel line. It's a little bit longer than the original, but I'll cut it to size later when installing the carburetor and the fuel tank. As far as this chewed up wire goes, I was trying to unplug it down here and just wanted to replace the whole wire, but it's not letting go. So I'm not sure if it's not removable, but I don't want to push my luck. So instead, I'm just going to cut the wire back right about here. You know, splice in this one from the coil to what's left of the green wire, and then that issue should be solved. So I think we're at the point where I can get the valves reinstalled. These valves don't use keepers. It just uses this cap to lock things in place. So it's fairly easy to install. But before I do that, I just wanted to highlight an additional problem I found with this engine. You know, so far I've found excessive clearance on the exhaust valve, scoring on the cylinder, and now I found an issue with the intake valve. When I initially took the valve cover off, I had rotated the engine to the compression stroke, but not top dead center. I stopped right about there. And I commented that the exhaust, or sorry, the intake looked like it had very little clearance on it. But when I actually checked the clearance, I was at top dead center. And I found we had six thousandths clearance, which is over the spec. So I left things alone, but I double checked it and I found a problem which I've already compensated for. But the issue was in the compression stroke, if I backed up about a third, this valve lost its clearance. It went to zero and actually unseated. So from the bottom of the compression stroke to about two thirds of the way up, this valve was not seated until the piston got to the top. And like that, this would never run. So I had to take off about nine thousandths from this valve. So when the piston is on the compression stroke at the bottom to about two thirds of the way up, I have four thousandths clearance. But that last little bit to the top, the clearance increases to about 15 thousandths, which is excessive, but it had to be made. That adjustment had to be done that valve has to be closed during the compression stroke. So yeah, this engine, it is a tired engine. We have a worn out valve guide on the exhaust. We have scoring on the cylinder, and I'd say we have camshaft issues. So really, this engine should be rebuilt. But in the end, this machine is only used once a year, I would say for most people, and only a couple hours at that. So with that in mind, I mean, this could last another 20 or 30 years even with a tired engine. And I'd say these issues aren't from overuse. It's from the lack of oil and the poor quality oil that was in there. Anyway, let's get the springs and the retainers installed and move on.
perfect. I think the head gasket showed up. At least I hope it's in here. All right, let's check the compression. Hopefully it's better than last time. I think we were at 15, maybe 20 PSI at best. This time I'm hoping for 60. Has a compression release, so we shouldn't see higher than that. Granted the exhaust is misadjusted, so it could be a little higher. So let's see. Beautiful. We're at 70 PSI and no issues pulling it over. So the decompression is still working. That's definitely enough compression to start the engine. I think the only thing we're missing now is the carburetor. So this came with a new carburetor. I assume it's a clone. Could be wrong, but I say we do the easy thing. We'll put the clone on there, give that a try. Worst case, we can always go back to the OEM. Actually, before I put the carburetor on, I want to hear the engine run. I have not heard it run. We do have compression. Don't even know if we have spark. So I'm going to put a little bit of two-stroke down the cylinder. And I've got a new plug. We'll get that installed. And it could be a little messy. The valve cover is still off. But that's okay. I just want to see that the engine does run. Nice. Perfect. The engine, it sounds good. So let's get the valve cover on, get the carburetor on, and run this a little bit longer under its own power. I guess before condemning this one, I should at least take a look. It might be clean, because the way the engine was, it wasn't going to run and the carb may not have been the issue, although it usually is.
it's not terrible. I mean, this one can definitely be cleaned up. You know, I think we're missing an O-ring. Probably stayed behind. But other than that, it's not in that bad a shape. You know, I think the only thing that's a little bit off is this choke lever. And actually the whole plate moves around quite a bit. You know, I don't think that's a showstopper though. This should work. But I do have the clone here. And there's a couple of things I like about it. The main jet is fully adjustable. And so is the pilot. So it is a clone. I'd say it is a gamble. But it has some nice features. So let's give this one a try. And if it doesn't work, we got plan B. Let's try this carb out before fully putting everything back together. I've had a lot of bad luck with clones. It's kind of a 50-50 whether they're going to work or not. And even if this one works, it's going to need to be tuned a little bit. So we'll make the needed adjustments to get it at least close. Try to get it idling and maybe try the gearbox, see if the tines engage.
I was expecting a lot of smoke from that exhaust, and there was some, but I think it was just oil burning out of there. I don't think there's much, if any, coming from the engine itself. So I'm pretty happy with that. The engine itself sounded healthy. It doesn't sound like anything's about to fall apart. So I think the engine is about there. The carburetor, it was actually running pretty well. I did have to lean out the pilot to get it to run and idle better and adjusted the idle set screw a bit. And we're pretty close. I think there's really no point in fine tuning it until that air filter is back on. So I think I'm gonna do that now. We'll get the plumbing squared away and I would say fix this as well. There's not enough tension. And once that's done, I would say the engine is there. There's really not much more to do to this engine, but there is still an issue over here. Although the drive system works, the wheels engage, the tines turn, there is a leak in that gearbox. I've been watching the puddle grow and we have a decent puddle under there at this point. And the best I can tell is that it's coming from the oil seal on the input shaft right behind this pulley here. So in order to access that seal, I need to get the engine out of the way, get that pulley off, and then I can swap that seal out. So yeah, let's finish up the engine and then get this thing 100%. So I'm thinking of trying to add a fuel shutoff to this. There's really not a lot of room and there's a tight corner here. So I'm not sure if it's gonna make it without pinching the line, but I think if possible, we should add the fuel shutoff. So I'm gonna give it a try. Probably shorten that up a little bit. The original carb, it had a nice 90 degree, so this line went cleanly into the carburetor, but this clone carburetor does not have that, so you can't exactly connect it like that, because it is going to pinch right there. So there's, I guess, two options. One is to loop it around, which will work, and the other might be to use a 90 degree adapter, but even that would come out to about there, and it would be a pretty tight connection. So I think I'm just gonna put a loop on it. And I think that'll be okay. It is a little tight. It is collapsing a little bit right there, but I think we might be able to get away with that. As far as the rope goes, it's actually plenty long enough. It just doesn't have enough tension. So I could wind it an extra loop around there, but I think in this case, I can just cut off a little bit and that'll increase the tension holding this handle a little bit better. Perfect.
I ended up getting a new filter to replace this old one. You know, I mean, technically, I guess this is usable. It's not broken, but yeah, it's pretty old. And actually the rubber going around is absolutely petrified. So I think the new one will do it a little bit of good. Let's get this shield out of the way so we can get the belt off. Kind of hoping some of that leaking oil had worked its way into the pulley. There is a decent amount of rust on here, and I'm not sure how well that's going to come off. But before I can try, I think I need to get this guard out of the way. We'll get that bolt out and see if that pulley will come off. Yeah, this one's going to be a fight. Let me try the puller first. If that doesn't work, we'll use some heat. Yeah, I think I'm bending it already. So, yeah, this is a bad idea. Let's not use the puller. Just a bit of WD-40 should help clean up that mess. I'm going to carefully use a screw to drive into that oil seal. 
being careful not to damage any of the ceiling surfaces. And once that's in, I should be able to use a little bit of leverage to pull out that oil seal. There's water in there. I was gonna say you could tell by the color of the oil, but now I just see water coming right out. Not good. So I'm gonna tilt this up a bit. We'll just let it all drain out before putting that new seal in. Anyway, you get the idea. This is gonna take a little while. So I'm gonna let it sit like this until it's all out. All right, I think we're ready to move on here. It's been actually over 24 hours and I ended up tilting this completely vertical because there was a bunch down here and it was not oil. It was 100% water down here. So that is all out. I think we're just about ready to go. And here's a look at everything that came out. So I would say at least half of that is water and the oil that's in there is just mixed with water. So yeah, not good but I think it's time to get that seal installed. I guess my only concern is the pitting on this input shaft. It is pitted quite a bit right here. And if you look closely where the oil seal was installed, that race does look better. I wouldn't say great, so we might still have an issue there. So I'm gonna hit this just with a bit of sandpaper, try to knock a little bit of that off. We'll get the new seal installed, fill it with oil, and just let it sit for another day, make sure that leak is fixed. Gonna swap out the original cap. This one, it's cross-threaded, doesn't really torque down properly, and the O-ring is petrified. So that's most likely how the water got in there. You know, I just grabbed this cap, it's from a Briggs engine, 
added an O-ring. And that one threads down without issue and snugs up real nice. So that should prevent this from happening again. That's gotta be some of the nastiest oil I have seen. It's been almost three days and everything is nice and dry. So I wanna say it's fixed, but I think the real test will be spinning this shaft and putting this machine under load. So let's get everything back together and then we'll get this outside and put it to work. on a little bit of anti-seize for the next guy. May have been a little quick to get it off the lift. I let the machine sit here for a couple days and discovered a pretty big puddle here. So I mopped it up, but you can see the staining it left on the cement. And my concern was the oil seal may have been leaking, the one that I replaced. And fortunately that is not the case. Something I overlooked though is that this gearbox for the wheels actually extends down this tube to the back of the machine and turns the tines. And the leak is coming right from here. There's actually a cover here. And when I was moving it around, I could actually see this whole thing moving. These three bolts that hold this cover on, they are loose. I'm not really sure why. So I think I'm gonna clean this up a bit 
get those bolts out, open it up, take a look at what's going on, and then seal it back up. Not even remotely tight. There are two crusty screws holding this thing on. So yeah, I'm not giving this one a whole lot of hope. Clean this up a little more now that I have better access. And it looks like these bolts actually go through as well into the gear oil. So we probably just need some RTV to seal this plate and some RTV on the bolts. That should seal it. I'm not seeing much here. You know, there's a few hints of maybe RTV at one point. You know, I did pull off also a, a piece of gasket. So there was a gasket here at one point and it's long gone, unfortunately. And it's not on the cover either. So yeah, I think we'll just clean this up and seal it up with some RTV. So change of plan, instead of using RTV, I think I'm gonna to try to make a gasket to seal this up. This plate, I think it's a good way to drain the gear oil in the future, because gaskets can usually be reused. And instead of changing the gear oil again, I think I'm gonna leave it in there, because I do think I got all the water out. But with a gasket, it'll be easy to pull this off and drain it out if I find that oil is turning cloudy. So. The plan was to use this punch set to punch a hole in some gasket material of the perfect size. You know, unfortunately, the largest one I have is 35 millimeters, and this actually measures closer to 45. So I cannot use the punch set 
to make a perfect circle. So I'm going to try to do this freehand. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. It only needs to form a seal all the way around. So it might take a couple of attempts, but I think that is the way to go. You know, worst case, I can always use our TV. Yeah, ideally, I would just order the OEM part here. But it is discontinued. And making a gasket usually isn't that difficult. So let's see, that should be large enough. So to make the circle, although I can't use this because it's only 35 millimeters, I can actually probably use this side to make the circle. It's still a little small, 42, uh, but that's okay because when I make the circle, I'm actually making it around the 42 millimeter circle that this punch is making. So if I cut kind of on the outside of the line, we should end up with something that is close to 45, maybe a little larger. Which I think will be fine. Pretty close. Perfect. The outer diameter does not need to be exact here. Yeah, it's okay if it's a little bit long. What does matter is where the placement of the holes are for the bolts. Yeah, that should work. That's just a bit of RTV on this bolt. We'll do the same on the other two but we need to get the bracket back in here before adding those bolts.
Let's just double check. And yeah, it looks like some water did mix in, unfortunately. I thought I was done. And then I took the cap off to just top off the oil to replace what was lost. And I saw the oil was milky. So yeah, I guess I didn't get all the water out the first time. So the plan is just to stand this up so that this part is facing down. We'll th let the oil seep out through here over a day or so and then fill it back up. It's coming out faster than I thought because a metal bushing fell out when I tipped it over. So that hopefully goes back in. Anyway, it's going to make quick work of getting the gear oil out. And I also drained most of the fuel and pulled the oil from the engine as well. And it's surprisingly dark considering this was only run, I'd say, for maybe five, ten minutes while testing it. So I'd say there is a lot of sludge in there for sure. So changing the oils out again, I would say it was needed in this case. So far, I've only spent about $30 to get this machine back up and running the way that it is now. And I thought I was done, but when I drained the oil the last time, I stood this machine up pretty much vertical. And although I had drained most of the fuel out of the tank, there was some, and I noticed there was fuel leaking. And at the time, I dismissed it as maybe I didn't tighten the cap or there was more in there than I thought. And after the fact, I got to looking a little closer and realized the fuel is actually coming from a crack right there in the tank. So that is fixable. Potentially it could be melted back together or just some epoxy to seal it up. But the more I looked around, the more I found other cracks going all the way around. And there was actually a plastic piece here as well, which broke right off while working on this machine. So this tank, it is very brittle and I don't think it's worth repairing, especially when brand new tanks are available on eBay for $30. So I got one of those. It's an easy swap. Just got to remove these two bolts, disconnect the fuel line, and put the new one in place. I suppose we should look at the new tank before getting too carried away, getting the old one off, just in case it's the wrong one. Yeah, it looks like the right part. Even comes with a cap. Before I can say this is done, I need to put it to work and just make sure. I don't know if the engine still makes enough power, and of course there could be an issue with the gearbox or the tines, you know, something I haven't uncovered already. So I don't have a garden, but as luck would have it, my lawn was recently dug up and it has not been seeded yet. So I say we start the engine, put it to work, and make sure there's no surprises.
what can I say? It works really well. And that's surprising for such a tired old Tecumseh. It had no issues at all tilling this lawn. And the gearbox did fine, the tines as well, no issues to report. Uh, at the end, we were surging a little bit, and I was a little concerned we had an issue with the carb. And, well, let's just say it's my fault because we ran out of gas. So, yeah, overall pretty impressed. You know, for such an old machine, it is built like a tank, and I think we'll be around quite a bit longer. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.